For the partial derivatives, we positioned the e, z components at integer i locations. Each of these i positions is separated by delta x. So let's say these are all the e, z locations. And there's delta x. So if at integer i locations, I'm going to say this is x equals 0. This is the starting position of our grid. And this would be x equal delta x, x equal 2 delta x, and so forth. So these are all the easy locations. Since the electric field is a vector, our diagram of the grid should not only show the location of the easy components, but also their orientation. So let's define some directions here. We have the x direction here. Uh, let's define the upward direction as being z. And by the right hand rule, y must be pointing into the screen. So this means for ez, we should draw an, an arrow pointing upwards at each of these locations, corresponding to the electric field at those locations pointing upwards. Now, for the partial derivatives, we positioned the hy's at half integer locations. So I'm going to draw an arrow pointing into the screen halfway between each of these ez's, and I'm going to label it as being hy. And for this, I could label it as being x equal delta x over 2. Here is x equal 1.5 delta x and so forth. Here is a cleaned up version of what the grid looks like. Now what about in time? What does the updating look like in time? In time we have what is called leapfrog time stepping. In this diagram time is equal to zero at the bottom and time progresses as we travel up the screen. You can see here that all the electric fields are evaluated at integer time steps. So at t equal delta t, we're going to update all the ez's. t equal 2 delta t, all the ez's again. And all the hy's are going to be updated at half integer time steps. All right, let's get back to Ampere's law. How would we use a computer to solve this equation so that we can predict the propagation of electromagnetic waves across the grid in the x direction? Consider each term in this equation. 